personal finance PowerPoint presentation. Brokerage account. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from Investopedia. What type of brokerage account is right for you, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Adam Hayes, updated February 17th, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, keeping in mind the two main categories of investments, fixed income, such as bonds, equities such as stocks also keeping in mind some of the major tools that we might utilize for investments such as mutual funds and etfs helping us to diversify so now we're looking at what type of brokerage account is right for you a broker also known as a brokerage is a company that connects buyers and sellers of investment vehicles like stocks and bonds a brokerage account is often where investors keeps assets in general, there are three types to choose from. Which type you choose is a matter of your needs and preferences. So we got the quick history of the brokerages to get some background, some understanding of them. Before the middle of the 20th century, access to stock and bond markets was restricted to those with enough money to invest and use a human broker's services. So notice if we think about the companies themselves, having a separate legal entity was a huge kind of innovation to help you know grow companies and uh, generate capital then the creation or the you know the idea of having stocks or breaking out the ownership into uniform units also made it a little bit easier for thinking about buying and selling stocks putting those stocks say on an exchange helped give more transparency uh, to the stocks that could be basically uh, traded at that point in time as well. So notice as the exchanges became more uh, efficient and more tools were put in place, such as mutual funds and ETFs, for example, that gives a lot more access to individual investors who are not you know, professional traders or do not have enough money to say hire a professional uh, investor acting on their behalf and they can take smaller amounts of money, for example, and have, still have some diversification within the market. So these have been huge innovations for both benefiting the companies themselves, generating more capital for more people, getting more money, more investment, and for individuals who can now invest uh, at an at a, at a affordable rate, even with a little amount that they need to invest with. So in the 1970s and 1980s, quote, discount, end quote, brokerage firms such as Vanguard and Charles Schwab emerged. They were willing to take on less affluent clientele because their business models were designed around investor volume. So at that point in time, now you've got these, uh, these tools, Charles Schwab and Vanguard, that are making it more affordable and targeting this huge market of people that could invest but can't do so with the larger uh, dollar amounts therefore they're going to make money on uh, the volume of course of the trades or the people investing so online brokerages such as e-trade uh, forex.com and ameritrade now td ameritrade uh, under charles schwab flourished as they seized the opportunity created by the internet at the turn of the century so clearly we've got more connectivity then that's gonna these these platforms are gonna allow us to basically connect people of both sides of the transaction. We've seen that in all kinds of places, right? These platforms are now able, like the Silk Road, to connect buyers and sellers, which should increase prosperity all around. So new technology reduces costs and allows them to extend the discount brokerage model by reducing commissions and minimum balances. The risk of self-direct investing online brokerage accounts brought about the self-direct investor. The investor conducts uh, investment research and chooses which stocks and bonds to buy for their portfolio. So now, of course, you've got individuals that are, if you're good at being self-reliant with these kind of tools and doing your own research, these tools are great. But of course, now you, you have less basically professional guidance to some degree, and you're utilizing some of these tools. Again, some of these tools can still kind of give you access in other ways, such as purchasing mutual funds and ETFs, or possibly index funds that, that are gonna help to pool and manage those kind of funds. But in any case, in addition, a new development over the past few years has been the advent, uh, the advent 
of the robo advisor these automated uh, self uh, software platforms often available as mobile apps take care of nearly all your investment decisions at reduced costs arguably the first robo advisor and first to offer cryptocurrency uh, portfolios betterment launched in 2010 after the great recession so since then robo advising has seen exponential growth and adoption and a flurry of startups and existing brokerages adding a robo advisor arm human brokers and financial advisors so we've got the human touch here on the human side <laughs> some people prefer to have a human handle their finances so clearly often a lot of people are going to say hey i would like to talk to an actual human being here about uh, my finances of course doing so means that if you got that personal advice you're typically going to be paying for the personal advice so you want to make sure that uh, the pros and the cons are weighed so if this is you then a traditional advisor may be a better fit than a robo advisor note that the robo advisor uh and, and some of these mutual funds that might maybe are targeted for things like retirement helping you to kind of automatically balance your portfolio for example these kind of things are set up based on based on general assumptions about long-term trading. So for example, if you're putting money away and you're trading for retirement and you put your money in say like a targeted fund or something like that, then that fund may be able to kind of rebalance your portfolio as you get closer, as the time horizon gets shorter towards uh, that goal, that retirement goal. The robo advisors are gonna use these common kind of heuristics, these common tools for long-term investing typically and and try to give you advice on what kind of balancing uh, you should have now those are usually the same kind of tools that human advisors are going to be based on as well but of course a human advisor can expand on it and possibly explain it in a in a more sufficient <laughs> manner but there's a question as to whether a human advisor someone managing the portfolio could be say a robo advisor or a targeted uh, mutual fund over over the long run and do so in such a way that they also clear the added costs related to that advice right so that's the question often time human brokers and financial advisors have been around since the beginning of modern stock markets and they're carved out space in today's competitive landscape by catering to investors with a high net worth or those uh, who prefer human interaction now as your income goes up just in terms of of cost and reward the human investor could be more and more beneficial because your investment strategy is going to become more and more complex you've got more money that you can basically be investing and you're going to have tax consequences that are going to be more significant and you might have estate planning consequences meaning you might need a human expert actually talking to other professionals such as your cpa your accountant for example and your lawyer or whoever's helping you out with your estate planning for example who also might include your cpa to limit your your taxes on that kind of thing so it gets more complex good financial advisors build and monitor investment portfolios and offer advice in many aspects of their clients financial lives they also provide uh, auxiliary services such as insurance estate planning accounting service and lines of credit Customers of these brokers can expect to pay 1% or more of their assets under management to advisors. Sometimes they may pay up to $50 per trade for individual trans transactions. Many advisors claim that these fees are well worth the extra value they bring, such as picking stocks for their clients' portfolios, accessing unique products and offering or building comprehensive financial plans when comparing brokerages pay attention to what the advisor is telling you the brokerage may require them to uh, push pre-packaged investment funds or financial plans if this is the case make sure you ask about building a plan that fits your needs so clearly the brokerage you know is going to basically be using you would think the same kind of heuristics that like a robo advisor would basically kind of use but try to tailor it to your per per particular needs so also pay attention to fees if they're charging more than one percent ask why and judge for yourself whether the extra co cost is worth it professional certifications such as cfp certified financial planning planner or cfa certified financial analysis ana analyst designate nation show that your broker has been trained and has passed a series of rigorous exams related to financial markets and planning 
so you can look at their credentials and say okay well have they you know does that line up uh, to have some you would give it say at least a minimum level of competence related to those credentials so you could also use the FINRA's broker check tool to see if their broker has been subject to regulatory complaints or ethics violations online self-direct broker accounts so online self-direct platforms include eTrade, TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, and many others. So be sure to check your bank. Uh, you may already have access to a self-direct online brokerage account. So the first place you might want to go if you're thinking about you know, making some trades is to talk to your uh, bank. Uh, for the most part, these platforms, uh, these platforms leave it up to you to figure out which investments are best but they typically offer a suite of research and analysis tools. So these kind of platforms you would think then are going to say, hey, look, these, the trading is up to you. We are a platform basically connecting two people together that want to basically make the trade. They're not going to give you the direct investment advice because they're trying to they're, they're, they don't want to get sued. Right. Their, their function is to act as the intermediary to facilitate the trade, although, of course, they might give you the research. Uh, that you can you know do the research with so many provide expert recommendations and insights to help you make informed decisions you are then on your own to execute the trades to build your portfolio through their website or mobile app these flat platforms charge a per transaction commission per stock trade and extra per options contract in addition they let you trade on margin and create uh, option strategies so on margin, you're kind of like taking a loan uh, to make the trade. So that gets uh, like a more complex trade. You're kind of leveraging yourself. So you want to make sure you know what you're doing if you're doing that kind of thing. So you can also invest in mutual funds, individual stocks, foreign exchange, Forex and exchange traded funds. Those are the ETFs. Online brokerages are best for the self-direct investor who knows about the markets or conducts research to choose a portfolio best suited for their goals. If you're only going to make a few trades a year, you may want to pay a little, uh, pay a little more per trade to get access to higher quality research and analysis. If you're a day trader, you'll probably want to consider a site that gives its most active users free trades. We got the robo advisors. The robo advisors automate investing and use technology to manage your portfolio. Since Betterment launched in 2010, there has been a proliferation in startups and existing financial companies offering this algorithmic trading service. Unlike the trading algorithms that power the high frequency trading, those HFT, a uh, desk at hedge funds and banks, robo advisors are likely to put your money to work using low cost indexed ETFs. So the index funds are, are kind of tied to the average kind of funds. That's how we get an idea of the feel of different sectors. They, they have these, the indexes are kind of like trying to average uh, by sector. So in fact, the con convergence of ultra low fee ETFs with low cost technology solutions available on mobile platforms make robo advising possible before robo advisors if you had only a few hundred or thousand dollars to invest you'd have to go online to a self-direct platform now you can put 200 or 2000 to work without having to conduct any investment research pick any individual stock or worry about rebalancing your portfolio algorithmic based robo advisors aim to place you in an efficient and diversified pa and diversified passive portfolio many of these platforms will even tax optimize your portfolios with tax loss harvesting or process a process by which an investor sells losing positions to offset the capital gains generated by winning positions so in other words you're going to use kind of this automated a uh, type of system to help kind of optimize your portfolios possibly with the use rather than managed funds like index funds and mutual funds there i mean mutual funds and etfs they're going to use those index those average funds and they may even be able to help out with like those more complex strategies typically of taking tax advantage kind of strategies if you have capital gains for example you might be able to sell some uh, stocks that have a loss to help to to cancel out uh, the gains possibly giving you a good tax strategy 
So the algorithms themselves are a, pro a proprietary company secret of robo-advisors. Robo-advisors are ideal for a new or young uh, investor who don't have much to invest. These platforms are also suitable for people who are fans of passive investment strategies because your robo-advisor develops a portfolio of indexed ETFs on your behalf. Robo advisors also shine for those long term investors who lack the time or desire to research and find the ETFs that meet their investment needs and strategies. But robo advisors are certainly not for everyone. Many brokerages are ad adapting their robo advisors to allow for more customization in their portfolio choices. However, this defeats the purpose of these products to build and maintain a growing portfolio. If you choose a robo-advisor, the factors to consider are primarily cost, uh, reputation, and added services. Ensure you monitor the cost of extra services. Some are free, but others might add extra costs.